How's it going, guys? My name is Bailey. I'm with Roger Performance Marine. Today, I'm going to walk you through the inside and out of this 2020 Baylighter E16. Uh, so, first, starting in the bow boat, we're going to go over the trailer. Um, so, this has a two inch coupler for the standard four way trailer plug. Okay. This one did come equipped with a swivel tongue. To do that, you need to take and pull this pin here and then pull up on the main pin to allow it to slide away. And then when you're putting it back together, the one thing you need to make sure of is this pin gets put back in place. Always check that, even if you didn't swivel it. Make sure that pin is in before you transport it down the road. Moving back down the trailer, um, this trailer is not equipped with brakes. It does have LED lights all the way around. Um, when you're backing it into the lake, each log traps can be a little different, but uh, rule of thumb is we say the front of the fender needs to be about three to four inches below the water. That can change depending on the pitch of the log ramp, but that's enough that you can lower the motor in, fire the motor up, make sure it's good to go, and then pull it off the water. If you've stopped at three to four inches below water, you fire the motor up and it's just not coming off with ease, then you can back in a little bit further so you don't rip the carpet under the bunks. But you want to, that's a good start spot, especially if it's windy or rough water. That way the boat can't be pushed around on the trailer until you're ready to take it off. Now we're going to move back to the back of the boat. All right, now at the back of the boat, a couple other things I want to show you while you're trailering it. Um, the rear transom straps. We've got two of them, one on the port and one on the starboard side. You want to make sure you pull these off before you go to launch it. Um, on the back of the transom, you'll also see a couple things. This is your uh, where you put your boat plug. Do not transport down the road with that. You want to pull that every time you uh, leave the lake, and that needs to be the first thing you do when you get to the lake. Um, this is the drain for the live well. This one was equipped with an aerated live well, so that's where the water will drain out when you're done using it. And then on the other side, you'll notice that that's where the live well intake's at. It's got a little screen there um, so that you don't take any debris or moss or anything like that. Um, again, you'll notice on the right side or the starboard side of the boat, it does have another transom strap. Just make sure you remove that before you go to launch it. Now I'll go over a couple things in the motor. All right, so we've got this boat equipped with the Mercury 75 horsepower fuel injected four stroke. Um, this is one of the biggest motors that you can put on the back of the E16, so it should run really well with this motor package on there. A couple things I want to go over with the motor. Um, this does not have any sort of transom support from the factory on it, so I do recommend for traveling down the road that you get a uh, transom saver, either one that bolts to the back of the transom, or they have some that will just uh, supply extra support to the uh, arm that raises and lowers the motor. Um, if you come over here and take a look on this side, a couple things I wanted to show you. You do have a tilt and trim switch right here. So you can raise and lower the boat or the motor while you're at the back of the boat. Let's say you're on, you know, you're in shallow water, you're on the beach, you need to raise it up to um, finish beaching it. You can do that from back here. Another thing it does have is a washout. Okay. If you pull that, you can hook your hose up to it at home and wash the engine out. You do not want to run your engine off of this. We have a lot of people ask if they can use this as their water source and this will not work. You do need to run it from the lower foot with a pair of earmuffs like we do at the shop. Um, the service schedule on this motor, the first service you're going to want to have done is going to be at 20 hours. Okay, We'll service the oil, oil filter, fuel filter, and then we'll also service the gear lube in the lower unit. After that, you're going to want to service this engine once a year for every 100 hours, whatever comes first. Okay. Um, propping on it is going to be different per altitude. Uh, we run a high altitude prop on it here at 3,000 feet. Um, the RPM, RPMs on this boat should be right in the 5,000 RPM range. Okay, that's going to be its optimal running performance range. Um, one thing on the cowling, they have made these super easy to take on and off. All you need to do is pull up on this latch, and now the motor's free. Okay, when you're putting it back on though, you want to make sure to pull down until you hear it click. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but you want to make sure it does click in place so it doesn't blow off going down the freeway. They're not cheap. You want to make sure it's fastened there so it can't go anywhere. So, Not a whole lot more to cover on the outside of the boat or the motor. Uh, we're going to hop up inside and go through some of the features and uh, get this boat ready for the water. All right, so now we're going to go over the uh, features in the bow as well as the optional trolling motor that we had installed on this one. Uh, so briefly, we're going to go over the trolling motor first. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is the adjustment shank on this. Okay. This right here is what you would use to um, set the depth, whether you want it all the way in the water or if you're in shallow water and need to bring the trolling motor up for any reason, you can use this to adjust how deep it's going to go in the water. And then it's just got this little thumb screw to tighten it. 
The one thing I do want to say is for the longest time, I thought, you know, put this all the way up here, allow it to go as deep in the water as possible. At our lakes, we don't get anywhere shallow enough that you would need to adjust it. I was dead wrong. One thing you do need to know is if you're traveling down the lake or down the road, not using this, this needs to be all the way here. That way the motor can't accidentally deploy, especially when you're on the road, okay? Um, so for the sake of the demo, we're not gonna have it go all the way down and hit the ground. We're just gonna deploy it as is. To deploy this trolling motor, you wanna take press down on this main lever, okay? And then lock it in place. Very, very simple to use. It's got a, this is a 12 volt trolling motor. It's got a 12 volt receptacle right here in the bow for a quick disconnect, okay? Very easy to put in. You can see it's keyed, so you can't put it in wrong. It only goes in one way. Want to put it in like there, twist to lock. Now it won't pop out on you, okay? One thing you can do also on this one is it's got the test button. That's gonna tell you your battery level, okay? And then it does have the uh, built-in foot pedal to control. Uh, very, very simple to use this foot pedal. Press it to the left, it's gonna steer to the left. Press it to the right, it's going to steer to the right, okay? Um, this right here is your gas pedal, okay? Right here, when it's on momentary. And this is going to be your power level. You can adjust it on power from zero to 10, okay? When it's on momentary and you go, let's make sure it's just gonna clear the boat. When it's on momentary, you press this button. That's gonna activate the prop until you let go, okay? On, off, okay? On continuous, if I go ahead and switch this over, it's going to be like if you're using it for trolling, it's gonna have continuous power to it and it's not gonna shut off until you either lower the power or switch it back to momentary, okay? So one thing you wanna be careful with is when you're using it, know whether it's on momentary or continuous, all right? We're gonna unhook this here so we don't accidentally turn it on. We've also got this Humminbird Helix 5 hooked in to run off the power drive. Uh, the cable hasn't showed yet, but this uh, Minn Kota power drive has what's called US2 sonar built into it. So it's got its own built-in transducer. Um, we need to hook that up and we'll do that at a later time. So when the front trolling motor is deployed, this fish finder is gonna scan everything from the bow of the boat, okay? Going over the bow of the boat, there is another cushion that will fill in here. We removed it for the video just to show you. You can have it laid out like you see here on the starboard side. If you want to lay out while you're driving down the lake or just lay out and read a book or if you're out fishing you can remove all the cushions and you, you've got these uh, casting platforms so it becomes a giant bow casting does have an additional seat with it so we'll take slide that in lock it in place lever right here will allow you to swivel it with these. Okay. Um, moving further to the back or the midsection of the boat, um, right here you've got two removable seats in the cockpit. These are just snap in. Okay. These seats are going to be um, what covers the live well. Okay. So it's got a built-in live well here. We'll go over that a little more in a little bit. Okay. This is going to be some additional storage. The one thing I do want to say, if you take a look at this seat here, you see this bracket, how it's uh, got a little hook on it? That hooks under the fiberglass. So when you're taking and putting the seat back in, be, and especially when you're pulling it out, be very careful that you don't just rip up on it because you can chip the fiberglass easily if you do it that way. So what I like to do is put the hook edge in first and it's locked in place. And then when I'm removing this seat, like I say, you don't wanna just pull up on it because that hook's what's keeping it in there. Start from the back where they've got it. They've got that ring for you to pull up on. That allows this hook to come out from under here without chipping the gel coat. All right, now we're going to climb up in the boat and go through the rest of the dash. All right, going over the dash of the boat, I like the way Bayliner laid out this. I mean, they did a really, really good job of keeping it simple and easy to use. You've got your ignition switch right here. You hear the alarm, tells you you got power and the motor's ready to fire. Okay. Um, all of your switches are over here. So you've got your navigation lights. Okay, so this switch is gonna turn on the uh, green and red lights up in the bow. Your anchor light is gonna turn on the white light in the rear. Build pump. This accessory switch is for your live oil pump and of course your horn. And then we ordered this one uh, factory with the Lowrance Hook 4 fish finder. So this one's really nice. The customer's got a fish finder in the bow to scan what's going on in the front. He's also got a fish finder at the console to scan what's going on in the back. 
Uh, right now it's on demo mode, so it's going to give you an idea of what it would look like at, if we were actually on the water. Uh, a couple things over on the control box I want to go over. Um, first, you got your emergency run switch. Okay, so for some reason the uh, boat doesn't want to fire up. That needs to be the first thing you check. We see a lot of people accidentally pump this or their kids will pull on the lanyard. Whatever the case may be, the run switch is down and they didn't notice it and it'll cause the engine not to fire. Another thing is the boat has to be in neutral for it to fire. So one quick way to check that is just wiggle the control box. If it doesn't go forward or reverse, you know it's a neutral. To get it to go in forward or reverse, you've got this red tab right here. Okay, you'll lift up on that, forward for forward, back to neutral, reverse. Okay, one thing with that, be very uh, careful and make sure you always go forward, then neutral, let it sit, and then go into reverse. You don't want to go from forward right into reverse. It's not good uh, for the engine at all. Okay, um, looking at the dash, this is really where they simplified things. Very simple. You've got battery voltage right here, and you've got your speedometer. You don't need any more than that. They made it easy. I mean, you don't need to be a mechanic to drive these. Hop in, turn the key, and go. Now we're going to go over to the live well, show you a little bit more on that. So we've got the cushion removed to access it. Bayliner did a great job with this. It's a nice deep live well. They did a good job finishing the fiberglass. Um, this is going to be the overflow. So if you accidentally left your switch on, uh, that's where it's going to flood into and go out off the transom port that I showed you guys earlier in the video. This plug here is what's going to plug your live well to keep the water in for the fish. Okay. And then the live well um, pump itself, super easy. You turn the switch on on the dash and then just turn this valve here to allow water flow. If you don't want any water flow to come in, turn the valve back off. Can't get it easier than that. A couple things I'm going to show you in the back of the boat, and then we should be done with this walkthrough. All right, the way they've got the back of this uh, laid out, they've got cushions that fill in here that make it really nice. It's a nice area to lay out on, um, some extra seating as well. You can remove this rear center seat. It's got a snap on the port and starboard side that'll snap in here and here to keep the seat from blowing out. Okay, with that center seat removed, you've got two extra seats in the back for extra passengers on board. Okay. On the port side compartment, that's where you're going to locate your fuel tank. And it is removable if you need a, if you've got it in a slip or you've got it, you know, at your lake house, you can actually just pull the gas tank out and take it, you know, maybe go in town instead of paying the marina prices. On the starboard side here, you can take and lift this cushion up as well. This is where you're going to find your battery. The reason I'm showing you this one is mainly for the battery switch. So you'll locate this right here. Okay, right now it's in and on. We've been using it to show you guys through the boat. To turn your ba battery switch off, pull the key out. This is really nice too, because if you're gonna leave the boat in a slip, uh, or you know, you're parked outside at a hotel or traveling with the boat, you can pull the key out. Nobody can get inside and mess with any of your electronics. When you wanna go and use it, it's keyed, so you can only put it in one way. Twist it, and it's ready to go.